Root fans, welcome on into Boots and Bands, your weekly show about soccer boots. Rich, do you know what week, what week or edition we're on right now, Boots and Bands? Are we on, like, week seven? This is episode number eight. We are oh. rocking, buddy. We are rocking. It welcome in, good. Rich, the, the Canadian Tati. How you doing, buddy? Oh, you know, I'm getting by, enjoying a drink. Yourself, oh, right. Brian? What do you got right there? What I have is a wonderful little milk stout from a wonderful bre brewery in Canada called Bose Natural Brewery. It was a beer designed by Tom Green, actually. Famous Canadian comedian. Nice. So you said her name is Bose? Uh, Bose, yes. B-E-A-U apostrophe S. Oh. I don't know if you can get it in the States, but if you can, it's delicious. Maybe you should bring it to the States. It can be our new sponsor. Exactly. We've, we've got a lot to talk about this week. Um, we are unofficially the warm-up show to Boots and Vans. Did you know that, Rich? I thought we were officially. Well, wait. unofficially. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Officially. no, no, no. Aren't we... Wait, did you say we're the unofficial warm-up show to Boots and Vans or to Men and Blazers? To Men and Blazers. We are the official warm-up show to to uh, Boots and Vans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this week, we've got a lot to talk about. We've got the uh, Adidas Free Football Crazy Quick and the rest of the free football from Adidas, the series. A lot of indoor boots this week we're going to be talking about. Um, we have the new Puma King SL, the classicals we'll check in on. A lot of boot spots, pretty interesting ones. Um, so we won't mess around too much, and we'll get into these indoor boots straight away. What do you think? Uh, I love it. Uh, like I say I play about double the amount of indoor that I do outdoor, so this is, this is wonderful. Hey, we're on. Uh, we're live on YouTube. If you guys are tuning in right now, definitely appreciate a thumbs up so we know you're online. And any comments you have during the show, leave them down below, and we will be checking them out as we go along. Brian, Brian will be monitoring the comments and then reading them out, and then I may add something pithy or humorous in and reply to the comment. To, I'll be listening. Yeah, I'll be listening to you talk right through the the episode, Rich. All right. <clears throat> Let's get talking about the crazy quick first, since they're probably like the highlight of this free football release of the series. They've got this 3D upper. It's got this honeycomb style. Well, not necessarily honeycomb. It's more kind of like perforated design that runs around the upper. And we got that mesh in the heel. Got that bubble design traction system that's really unique. We've got different heights on each of these little bubbles. What are your thoughts on this boot, Rich? Well, uh, several fold. I mean, the 3D upper is apparently like the big hot thing in boots right now. I mean, started out with the Hyper Venom, the New Balance prototype has a similar sort of thing, and now we have Adidas doing it with the Crazy Quick for the uh, for the indoor turf game. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting a boot there too. I was done you know, with the Bomba Finale too as well. Had a similar sort of upper. Um, I mean, That's right. Yep. The, the upper on this one as well is uh, Adidas is using some of that zero text technology, which they first teased in the uh, the 99G prototype. That's right. And uh, I, in this zoomed up image, you can see where they have it labeled. The zero text down there. Yeah, which I'm assuming. Now I'm assuming is is the entire upper like the zero tech uh, zero tech or is it just like that little bit at the front? Is it you know? I, I'm, I'm thinking it's like this layer. You can see this layer that's across the whole entire upper. Yeah. It's like this light layer that covers the top that adds probably adds some strength and support, but it's like mm -hmm. super lightweight. No, they are, and you know what? It's and, and, you know, then they have the same thing that all indoor boots have, which is that mesh heel in the back, sort of like the running shoe kind of idea. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, I like, I, I like the design of it. It's kind of new. It's kind of different. It's nice to see Adidas sort of <laughs> taking the turf game a little bit more seriously, like the small sided kind of thing. Yeah. Because it's really been an afterthought. Basically, you've been getting like, Models of the 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 eleven Nova and like the F ten in turf, and that's really been it. Or like the Nitro Charge three point oh. That's right. It so, kind of looks like something you see in the Matrix. That's, that's yeah. That's my initial impression. It's pretty crazy that camo style design on the sole plate. 
very, very vivid. The bubble style traction system is extremely unique, and it's one of the reasons that um, I really want to check these out in person. Mm -hmm. Which we do have a pair coming in this week. They should be in on Friday. I'm not sure nice. that I'm the man to test these out, so I might check them out and send them your way, Rich, to uh, to give a, a run over, a run through. Oh, I I would I would enjoy that because I mean I play on all different kinds of turf surfaces, which based on the uh, based on like you say the sizing difference. I mean to quote the buzz speak, it's for adaptive ground control, which to me means not all turf fields are created equal. Very true, man. Very true. <laughs> so, they're, they're, they're all completely different. So this is going to be something which is sort of designed, in my opinion, to give you sort of equal kind of quality on every field, regardless. Yeah. Those of you uh, watching right now, let us know what you think of this design and if it's the type of boot that you'd be interested in wearing if that sole plate for me the sole plate is like the real interesting part of this boot I mean I know the upper has that um, definition that is kind of unique to an Adidas boot so that adds a little bit of intrigue to the boot but for me it, it is that that traction, traction system and those rounded um, little stud type pieces yeah, you can't even you can't even call them like the traditional like turf nubby studs because it's no, something entirely different. Yeah, <laughs> it, it have a, it, everything it it has the idea of like you know uh, oh like bubbles in an aero bar almost. You know what? Everything that is kind of different. That was what I had, and it's funny because I don't think a lot of people watching will know what an aero bar is, but that's kind of what I had as well. It reminds me of an aero bar. I was going to say, do you have aero bars in the States, or is it just like no. a Commonwealth thing? <laughs> there, there is, I think there is some sort of a bar, but it's not an aero bar. Uh, up on the screen right now, we should have the entire free football lineup that's currently on the market. And different versions, all designed for, for different styles of playing and playing conditions. Different price points as well, um, and it starts up in the top left, the control sala, which has this very, very interesting circular pattern, this 3D texture pattern on the upper, designed to be your, your indoor specific shoe. I, I like this design, and I, and I said it to you earlier, Rich, when I was testing out some boots for Pony back in college, Pony, when Pony were trying to hit the market, they give us a prototype boot like this that we got to wear for a few weeks, and I had this type of design along the strike zone, and I really liked it because it gives you that specific area, like that exact sweet spot. It basically says, hey, this is your sweet spot. It's an area that you need to be striking the ball. I found it to be very useful, and I like the boots, and sadly I had to hand them back after testing them, but I obviously wish I had a pair still. So it's an interesting design. Um, when we move into the center image, this is the Boost Messi version, and we've talked about this a little, a little bit, right? Yeah, no, this is the one where we're not quite sure sort of what it is because we know the Boost is a running shoe, and it uses the Boost technology, which you're probably a little bit more educated in than I am, seeing as you do things like run, whereas I don't. So, But from best what we got is it kind of could be like the old Nike street gatto where you know you can wear it as an everyday casual shoe but should have should you be walking around and there be you know a, a little small sided footy game going you can hop right in without worry and you know you're going to be all right yeah i think that's what it is i think it's that that style i know the boost technology is designed to give some extra bounce when you're running so they're kind of like more specific to running shoes and I'm with that mesh heel as well. It gives it that running shoe type style. The the forefoot with that letter um, creates a an ideal boot, as you said, for just jumping into a game anywhere needed. For me, I see these be more of like a fashion boot or something that you'd wear around the office. You know, it gives you that soccer style look, but in a very fashionable sense. And given the fact that these are messy shoes, I'm sure he'll be using them as his wear around shoes than other than jumping in games here, there, and everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's so So what you're saying is that I have to retire my old Sambas and get an update. You might need to. You might need oh. to. From there, 
I think the next top boot in the lineup is bottom right, which is this the um, the speed trick in this wild camo design. Very unique um, looking boot. I actually kind of like these. They're very very jungle like. Um, but this is obviously going to be an ideal, ideal boot for indoor. Oh yeah, no, this is going to be your ideal sort of any sort of indoor game. I mean, I mean, I remember. Well, the speed trick originally is sort of that like. Again, it's sort of that all-around sort of boot where it's yeah. You mean I mean you're not going to wear those out in the street and everything else, but it it can play on any surfaces. More yeah. freestyle, sort of more freestyle oriented. That's exactly what it is. And I remember when we did a gear show with with the older model of these boots. Um, that's exactly how we felt about them. They were like a perfect boot that the the sole play flexes completely up. Um, and they, you know, they're really suitable for different style or playing conditions. We we actually played on a railroad, and they worked out really well. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah no, I can see that. Track. So these yeah. are, that yeah, no, like if you're uh, like the uh, the young uh, the young girl from uh, used to go to UNC, uh, Indy Cowie. Oh yeah. Who's Fuller like trip. the wor the world freestyle champion, or so, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. That's right. That sort of thing. And from there, we have the uh, Excite and the Stilly Arrow, which is bottom left, and we, you know, they're kind of like economical models in a sense. That bottom left has that 3D print on the upper. You do get that same bubble-style traction system on the sole plate, uh, but the upper is slightly different. So, mm -hmm. and then the top side, the top right, which is a very, you know. It's but the top Sally used to be, and this is going back a couple of models now. It used to be Adidas's top indoor boot for the futsal game. It it used to have a leather upper. It you know it's obviously they've changed the direction of where they're going with it now, and they're going to go with the top Sally as being sort of a midpoint where you have the control Sally as being the top end indoor boot. But you know, uh, have a few friends who wear the top Sally's. Good performing boot. You know what? For sixty bucks, you get a good boot out of it. So I mean, don't be scared off by going. Oh, it's just you know, sort of like a cheaper model. It's 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 a good performing boot for the price. Yeah, they do the business. And if you're a Gold Club, club member, you can get them for fifty four. So a little bit cheaper. Uh, if you guys have a, a boot out of that lineup that you like best, let us know in the comments down below, so we can check in and see what is most popular. Choice from hey Brian. Yeah. Speaking of indoor boots. Yeah. Have a look. Oh, bring it up. <laughs> I don't have you on my screen right now. Let me see. Oh, come to your screen. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. You've been the wearing turf. these things, right? Uh, I got a couple of games in them, and uh, I'm really digging them. It's. I mean, I'm blistered right now on my right le on my right foot, high, a little higher up in the ankle than where I would normally be. Thanks to there's a little bit of a lip here on the dynamic fit collar where it kind of bumps in a little bit. Right. So it's just something that I just got to get used to. But now, no. Size wise, how are they for you? Uh, now, size wise, I wear my traditional turf boot is the Adidas Mundial Team, which I take in a nine a nine US. Right. If you take a nine US, get these in a nine and a half. So because you they, you're gonna want to go a half size bigger, and uh, that's that's done. I, I made that decision thanks to Soccer.com, the shoe fitter app, and uh, yeah, no, it was it was a perfect decision to go with the half a size up. They fit fantastically. So your blistering on the heel has nothing to do with the sizing. It is just the fact that there is a little lip there. Yeah, no, it just has to do with the fact that yeah, it sits a lot higher than anything I'm used to. I mean. I probably haven't worn a high top shoe since I don't know the ninth grade. So this is a new thing for me. Is yeah, having having this whole the jump up here. Yeah, mm -hmm. the collar. I mean, I like what the collar does when I'm playing. I can understand the method behind it. Like when we first when we were first looking at the Magistas and things like that with the collar, and it said. It kind of, it's designed to have your leg all operate in one sort of motion all the way down to your foot, and I went, well, that's preposterous. Uh, having a look at it now and actually getting to use it for a few games, I can sort of see where they're coming from. It seems to link everything in a little better. 
Well, here's the thing about that. And you know, when I did my review on the Superfly, I commented on the fact that I felt it kind of like trapped my foot a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm more of a dynamic player, I'd say, Rich. Out of both of us, I'm more dynamic. I've got a little bit more speed, so I'm more focused a lot, on a lot more speed. Okay, so I'm more focused on acceleration and trying to get forward as quick as possible. Whereas you're more of that Iniesta role that you like to possess the ball, play it around the place. So maybe that gives us a clear indication of the sort of player that this dynamic fit color is a dynamic color is designed for. No, exactly. I mean, I think what I think what Nike should look at doing with the dynamic fit collar is how you have, yeah, you have the Magista over, and in this case, like the Superfly Elastico, where it's the full-on collar. And then you have, like, the Superfly, the, the Vapor Superfly, the Mercurial Superfly, based on the sort of the Vapor idea. Yeah. But you see, like, the Ronaldo boot, where he has, he has a dynamic fit collar, but it's entirely different. It comes up nowhere near as high. It's a lot lower. It's more in line for what players who are going to want to use explosive speed are going to be asking for. Right. And, I mean, a lot of people do ask me that question, which boot should I get, the Vapor or the Superfly? And my answer is pretty much always the Vapor, unless you are a creative style player that likes to sit behind the front line, maybe, and control play. You know who I see being ideal for the Mika Collar is somebody like Juan Mata. Yeah. That's the, that's the style of player. I see getting the most out of the, the likes of the Superfly or the Magistas. Well, uh, I, I mean, I just look at different players who have gone with the uh, the Superfly, and y you see them where you're like, what what have they done? The, the, the boot looks different. What boot is it? Oh, it's a Superfly, but they've cut the collar off it. Right. They've made those, their it, personalized modifications. Yeah, they've taken, they've taken the scissors to it, and they've removed the collar. Yeah. Which, you know, those are the players who probably should be going the Vapor route, but I think it's something to do with the Flynet, and, and you know... Well, the the Flynet is, fly is nice. I'm not going to lie. No, it's, it's, it's nice. I mean, I, I thought it was gimmicky, but I'm, I'm really liking it. I mean, the boot apparently weighs nine, close to ten ounces. I don't feel, I don't know where it is. All right. <laughs> it's it's got to be all in the sole of it, because there's, there's nothing up top in weight. How have you found the traction system? Uh, I've been play. I played on uh, old turf. I played on a carpet. I played on new turf, and it's a nice. It's a nice system. I mean, it's traditional. Traditional turf studs. Right. The so easiest way to put it. It's it. It's, it's not going to let you down. Right. Good man. Well, appreciate the update. We're going to get a review of those after Christmas. Yeah, after Christmas, uh, because they were a Christmas gift. I was able to con I was able to blag my way into using them for two days, so it worked out to three games. But as soon as we're done here, they have to go back until Christmas. Back into the box. Uh, well, back into actually not the box, but back into the boot bag which came with them. What indoor boot comes with a boot bag? Yeah, that's nice. Well, <laughs> a two hundred and fifty dollar pair. <laughs> A hundred, hundred and fifty. I would have never. There was no way anybody would have gone for two hundred and fifty. <laughs> you got them for one hundred and fifty. That's oh yeah, that's right. I'm thinking, yeah, it's the retail. Yeah, sorry, the two fifty is. I'm thinking Superfly. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, one hundred and fifty dollar boot, indoor boot, comes with yeah. Bag. It it so, should. <laughs> speaking of high end boots, let's bring it in with the um, the Puma King Classicals that were just released last week, and I know you definitely appreciate these boots and their design. Uh, they look fantastic. Uh, the only thing which is wrong with them, and this is a very minor nitpick, although I can't really say it's a nitpick because I've never worn a boot with the sole plate, is sort of like the weird, the weird like five-sided studs there that they have. Yeah. Uh, they, they should be conical, but that's I mean that's that's just me being nitpicky. Other than that, the boot looks fantastic. It does look good. Uh, um, what did we say? It was two thousand one pairs released worldwide, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. was it the uh, yeah the Superfly the King Superfly first came about in two thousand one, was it? Yeah, two thousand one. That's right. So it, it, it correlates to that. And we Which have I a think. pair coming in this week um, that we will have for next week's episode to check out. So guys, stay tuned for that, and we'll 
bring you those. Right here, speaking of boots that we have in hand, and I mentioned these la in last week's episode that we were going to get a pair in. I've got the good old 11 Pros right here. Oh, they look nice. They, they do look nice. They do look nice. They Did you just get them nice. today? No, I got them earlier this week. I haven't featured any or posted anything on the website about them, but um, I have yeah. on Instagram. But yeah, initial reaction: the upper is a lot different than I expected. It's very um, textured. There's a lot of definition to it. The leather that covers it is very thin, and it's a lot more pliable than I thought it was going to be. So if you can kind of see, I'm kind of moving pretty fast right there, but you can see. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a nice upper. The design is pretty unique from the front view. But, um, yeah. yeah, I'm excited. One of the things I like about them is the insole, which is an odd thing. You got the Champions League logo on it, but there's like a memory foam. See that region right there? It's kind of like a memory foam. So okay, it's yeah. Like extra padding around the heel. It's got the Champions League logo right there, as you can see. Yep, no, no, it's it's there. It's, so this is like the uh, the Champions League pack. I mean, yeah, I mean, everything's be the Champions League pack these days, but yeah, yeah, it is. Um, the the insole also has that like suede lining. I'm 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 a fan of suede linings. Uh, if you look at the A60 SX Fly, I'm always talking about. They have that like suede inner lining. This does this doesn't. This has the synthetic material. Yeah. So I mean. There's no harm in this synthetic as long as your foot doesn't move around too much. But I'm going to check these out. Um, the tongue also has some padding, which I didn't really realize from images. Oh. I'm going to I'm going to test these out. I need to shoot a video. I'll probably shoot a video of them tomorrow, hopefully. Like sort of like an unboxing to give some more detail. And then I'm going to break them out. I hope tomorrow night for the first time. And I'm excited to do so. Nice. So if they have it Are on. you? Are you just dragging them right into a game straight out, or are you? Uh, yeah, it being was. Or are you being responsible? I'm never responsible, Rich. I don't have time okay, to be responsible, then. my friend. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take them right out tomorrow night. So, we will see how that goes. Next up, we got some boot spots. You will be uh, Danielle De Rossi. You what? I said you'll be joining the likes of Danielle De Rossi then. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I've got an image to share. Come on, you. Okay, we'll kick it off with Charlie Austin, who had an interesting weekend for QPR. He managed to score, and then two minutes later, sent off. He actually had a really good game this weekend. Um, but he's in these the original vapors from 2002 in the silver slash red colorway. Interesting boot spot right there. No, that's it. It's an interesting one. I mean, I mean, he had a like you said, he had an eventful day wearing them. It's, yeah. it's years. Like I said, it. I mean, the other week we had what was it, Drogba wearing the uh, Mercurial Vapor two point ones or something like that. That was uh, something that we got told about, and I looked and we saw it. Yeah, but then you have yeah the, the original Vapors from. From when when was it you said? Luke, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, two thousand and two. Okay. Which is interesting because I also have. I get to pull this up. Same. An image from a Nike event a few years ago, one of the Vapor events, and they had all of the boots um, in these like display cases, and I thought this write up was pretty interesting on the two thousand and two Mercurial Vapor. So you guys want to read it, you can check it out. But one of the interesting parts is that last paragraph says, the opera was made of an extremely thin, lightweight synthetic leather. The vapor also featured an external heel counter to provide added stability, which at the time was very uncommon. In testing the shoe, it showed a 3% decrease in the time to cover a 20-meter sprint compared to other boots. 3%, man. That's so minimal. <laughs> That's just a weird stat to me. That's uh, an we interesting marketing thing. It really is, 3%. I don't think when they were released we heard 3%. We just heard the fact that they were, um, you know, a, a speed-focused boot. But it's just interesting that Nike would bring that up now. 3% I mean, decrease in time over 20 meters. I mean, the question there I have is, because they had, they had Ronaldo, well, the original Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo yeah. now, now known as, like, Fat Ronaldo, 
who at the time was like the fastest guy playing the game at the highest level wearing yeah. those boots. So did they have him did they take Ronaldo in a pair of in a pair of Mercurial Vapors in 2002 and have him run 20 meters and then take like Paul Scholes in a pair of T90s and have him run 20 meters like a small little asthmatic kid from Manchester running against like the fastest one of the fastest players in world class soccer is that, is that what they did to get that 3%? I'm not it's, I don't it's know. an interesting number I mean, if that was the case, I think you would have got somebody else that was even slower and made them run 10% slower. Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting one. I just thought this was an interesting image in the the context of the original Vapor. And how I missed that. I missed that boot, though. That's a nice boot. That's a great boot, man. That is a great boot. And I know we've had several re-releases of Nike boots in recent times. I want the original boot. I want the original. Yeah, I don't, I don't even want, want a real release. <laughs> I don't want the Vapor 10 in the style of the original, I want the original, even if it's a little bit heavier and it's not as technically advanced as the current day releases, I just want an old school boot like this to in. No, that would be, that would be, yeah, no, that would be world class. I mean, if Nike can, I mean, you, you, you can do a re-release of that. That's, you know, people would pay three, three hundred, it was the Vapor. People would pay five hundred dollars for that. Maybe. I mean, I I wouldn't because I'm not a huge vapor guy, but you know. Would you guys wa Would you guys watching right now? Let us know in the comments down below. Would you pay 500 bucks for a pair of the original? Vapor? You can probably get the original vapor on eBay for 500, but let's yeah. say it was released as an exclusive package where you knew you were getting a pair that was designed or sorry that was created maybe six months ago and released in a nice package by Boot Bank compared to something that was released 12, 13 years ago, 12 years ago. Um, and is pretty old school. You don't know where to be. So would you pay 500 for that brand new pair in an exclusive box with a brand new boot bag? Let me know in the comments down below. Or how much you would pay. I was going to say, yeah, if you wouldn't pay $500 for it, how much would you pay? That's a good question. So we'll watch out for that. Right here, you want to you wanna give us a little rundown on this one, Rich? I'll check the comments and see how guys are doing with the comment section right now. Speaking speaking of tiny asthmat, as, asthmatic kids from Manchester, here he is in the flesh. Paul Scholes playing in, I believe it was in Thailand this week, uh, in a Global Legends Series match. Scored two wonderful goals. Uh, and, and there he is, uh, wearing a boot which I don't think anybody ever... When you think Paul Scholes, you think speed boot. And when you see Paul Scholes, you definitely don't think Adidas. So it's no like way, the, the most the most random boot that you could possibly have had is the Adidas F50 on on, on Paul Scholes' feet. Uh, the only thing I kinda have on this, uh, I kind of when I saw first saw the first saw the pictures, I think I sent a video in to you about yeah. a earlier on in the weekend saying, look at these Paul Scholes goals and listen to the commentary on the second goal because it was the best commentary ever. Yeah. It was just, it was literally just a guy, it was just a guy speaking Thai when Paul Scholes hit the ball just went, <laughs> 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 and that Paul was scores, all he did. <laughs> Paul Scholes, he scores goals. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is an interesting decision to see him in the F50. Some people kind of commented when we posted an image of these that maybe it was an Adidas sponsored event, which it obviously wasn't because if you look at Robbie Fowler right there, Robbie Fowler is putting a few pounds. He is wearing a blacked out pair of Nikes, so and their entire gear is all Nike. So the fact that he chose to wear these was definitely down to personal preference. Um, and it is interesting. When he came out of retirement that time at Manchester United and he was wearing the T ninety lasers, he actually went out the day before the game to pick up like a pair of T ninety shoots or something. Yeah, um, the yeah he, model because he needed a pair and it was all he could get his hands on. Yeah, no, he had, the story was that when he retired that he had given all of his boots away to like the academy kits and things like that. So, yeah, he had to go out the day before the game and grab a pair and he, the only thing they had in his size were the shoots. Uh, I'm starting like I said is that I know that schools he was a late addition to the Global Legends series roster. So yeah. it could be that that's all that there was available in his size was... It could be, dude. He, he, seems like a, he seems like the player that just runs out of his house, runs down to the local boot store and says, like, hey, what have you got for me, mate? Pretty much, yeah. 
Uh, what do you got? Salford. He's running down somewhere in Salford. He's like the local boot store. What do you got for me? But interesting spot. Um, we also he's, have. He's still got it too. If if you did if you saw the clip of the two goals. Yeah, he he has man. He's, the guy, he's the guy still knows, got it. I mean, the guys knows. that chip was absolutely insane. Yeah, and the thing that's the thing is and the. We were wondering as well as with Man U's injury crisis right now, could there be a third return? I would love to see a third return. I don't know. I I I, I think he he would pass him at this stage. This weekend we also had the MLS Cup final. This is kind of like the last thing I think we have this week, Rich. It's um, some images from the final of Marcelo Salvas and uh, Jermaine Jones, and it's interesting because. Um, Sarvas has the Diodora Zon, the Diodora DDNA, and on the feet of Jermaine Jones is some Under Armour blurs and that crazy US style design. I think we've we've renamed it the US style design. We could rename it the New England style design because it also matches the gear. Yeah, no, absolutely we could. I mean, this is if if there's an image that MLS doesn't want you to see, this is that image. I think this is a great image. I have full respect for this. It's too. Yeah, but this is. Go ahead. But, but this is the image that they don't want you to see because MLS is Adidas. Oh, Adidas the, is the MLS itself. Yes. Yeah. The, the last thing that they want you to see is two players on their premier teams wearing an wearing a Diodora boot and an Under Armour boot. I love it. For me, this is like this is perfection. Well, uh, yeah, but that's because you got fined for wearing lottos, though. I did, man. I and did. my commiserations on the result. Thank I know you for that. You, I know it that was, you were pulling, pulling for I the was. old club. I was, man. I, I really was. But um, five, f first, it's a sad statistic, but the first um, professional U.S. franchise to have lost five title games in a row of any sport. Yeah, I mean, at least at least you can you, you can have a little bit of solace because what they didn't do was like the Buffalo Bills of uh, the mid 90s who lost four consecutive Super Bowls. You've at least stretched this out. You've just lost five appearances out of five in the championships. Yeah. It hasn't been in a row or anything like that, so it's nothing that that terrible. Yeah. There was there was a there was a run of three in a row, two in a row, two in a row, three in four years. So, but that was that was back in the old days, wasn't it? Of like MLS one when DC United. No, that was won. back when I was there. We lost the oh. uh, the last time they were in the final. Oh seven was the year I was there. Okay, and, and that was, that was our third and and four years. Ah, yeah, uh, and cool. I'm not mistaken. I don't think those are the carbon blur. Are oh, sorry. Look those look like the clutch fit. Yeah, they're the clutch fit. Sorry, they're the clutch fit with that rubber textured diamond style design. Yes, they're the clutch. Yeah, no, I just, I just saw, I just looked at the sole play and I went, wait a second. Yeah, we got another image of them here where these guys were pretty close all game long. But you can yeah, see they were. Uh, DDNA is a little bit closer, and you can see them. Yeah. Yeah. Kicking the uh, kicking the seven bells out of each other, from what I understand, for. Yeah, chasing each other down, hacking each other down. But yeah, we lost the final, but so be it. Good way for Landon Donovan to go out, I guess. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Also, yada. question. Yeah. Uh, ladies, uh, ladies World Cup draw, the Women's World Cup next year. Is in Canada. Is in Canada, is in my home and native land. Uh, now, apparently there was a big to-do about it, and I'm in the middle of writing something up on it for the blog of... Oh my God! USA group of death. Group of death. <laughs> nearly, as, nearly as bad as the men's men's group in Brazil. It, 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 apparently, apparently worse than the men's group in Brazil. It's the worst group ever. It's the worst group ever. It's it like yeah, it's it's the worst thing which could have happened. FIFA hates America. FIFA is bringing this that kind of thing. This is the worst group. This is the toughest group in World Cup history. Is the U.S. Sweden, Nigeria, and Australia. And I should note that in games against those three teams, 
the United States have lost six times, all of those losses to Sweden. So, so, the, so the group of death, because it's the toughest group at the World Cup, contains three teams, only one of which has ever won a game against the U.S. It, it doesn't sound very terrifying or deadly, I suppose you could say. Yeah, you need you need to throw in like Japan or Germany in there to make it a little bit more deadly. Yeah, no, but that would never happen because of seeding. Yeah, right, right. But that's what I I'm mean, saying. If you, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's hard to define if, this one as a group of death. If you want a group of death, air quotations, uh, surely you'd have to look at the fi that group, A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, the last group. I think it's F. Sounds, uh, sounds right. But the group has England, France, Mexico, who have emerged as a stronger contender in CONCACAF now. They're definitely, definitely the consensus number three team. And Colombia, who are a bit of a mixed bag. No one quite knows what to expect. Yeah. That's surely, that group has three teams which could come out of it. I don't know about Colombia. I'm not that educated about their women's soccer program, but certainly on any given day, England, who England could lose a game to Mexico, uh, England, France, it's going to be a tight game. France, Mexico could be tight. So there's definitely three teams that come out of that group. Yeah. You're comparing. You're comparing. You're taking that group and saying that's not the group of death, but this group with America and Sweden. Nigeria and Australia is a group of death. When there's only two teams which are coming out of that group, and it's Sweden, America, and not necessarily in that order. But I think group of death sounds a lot more romantic, and it's better for ratings than group of we're going to thrash Nigeria and Australia and probably beat Sweden 3-1. I think you've got pretty spot on right there. <laughs> I mean, how, how else do you raise the profile of the tournament and make sure people are excited that it's going to kick off pretty soon is you start to evoke terminology like the group of death. So people are like, oh, this is big time. we got to get invested in this. we got to check this out. So, Not not this is our team. They're probably the best team in the world talent-wise. You should probably watch them because they could probably win. It's They're in really tough, so you better watch them. And then they're going to win yeah. the first game 8 nothing, And you're going to go, what is this? <laughs> Well, uh, we'll, was, we'll be watching for sure. Uh, I will be watching and hoping that they actually do lose all three games because, uh, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, there isn't a team which vexes me more than the U.S. women's national team. It's just kind of the way that they go about business. Uh, well, they're supremely talented, and I can admire the talent that they have. But the kind of way that they go about things, it, it bothers me at times. Sydney LaRue is a pretty awesome player, too. So. D don't mention Sydney, Sydney LaRue in my presence. You did that intentionally. If you would have said Alex Morgan, I would have gone, yes, Alex Morgan is probably one of the top three players in the world. Yeah, <laughs> because she's struggled, she with, she's is. struggled with injuries lately. That's been her problem. She's had some niggling injuries, and it's kind of set her back a little bit. But I'm sure she'll be ready and raring to go for the World Cup, as will Sydney Leroux when they play Canada in the quarterfinals or semifinals, whatever they meet. Uh, oh, that's the that's the other thing. Apparently, depending on results, uh, there's no way that Canada can play the U.S. until the finals. Should that happen? Well, that's even better. <laughs> that would be a, that would be a good final right there. Uh, I I would I would enjoy that final. Well, I wouldn't enjoy that final. I'd be a nervous wreck during that final. Yeah, you would. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, no, jeez, no. Uh, yeah, the wager will be how many four-letter words I use on Twitter during that final. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna set the oh, I'm gonna set the over under at thirteen hundred. I'll take the under on that. Really? Because I think I can do the <laughs> over. Don't you worry. <laughs> I don't know Rich, if you have read my tweets during a Canada game. <laughs> we are uh, we are out of time. We are out of time because uh, because Men of Blazers Blazers is about to start, so we gotta we gotta get off so we can 
check it and watch Men and Blazers. We're the unofficial warm-up show, if you haven't heard. Um, but next week, since we're heading into the holiday season, we should give away a pair of boots. So anybody that wants to enter to win a pair of boots, tune in next week. We'll be on at the same time, same place, unless you're changing venue, Rich. Uh, that will that that's a week to week thing. So I'll find out I'll find out next week if I'm changing venues. So so we might see you in Starbucks next week. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't go to a Starbucks. That's ridiculous. <laughs> or does your but local might, bar might see me. Man. I it does, but they won't give me the password. <sighs> <laughs> Dang those guys! Yeah, Dang those guys. Um, we appreciate any thumbs up you guys have to offer. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave any comments down below whether you're watching live right now or you're watching in the future. On, or, on, on, on the PVR? Yeah, yeah, on demand even. Are we on demand oh, yet? On, no. Oh, no, I, I'm sure we have to be on demand at this point. Uh, we're in demand. We appreciate you guys watching. This has been Brian. That's Rich over there who's actually the Canadian Tati. Uh, we'll see you next week, Rich. Yep, take care. We'll see you guys.